Thank you. I do want to express my appreciation to Canon, their Explorers of Light program, for uh, sponsoring my talk here today. We're in a very interesting era, aren't we? We're uh, seeing things we've never seen before, at least photographically. It's interesting that in some cases, we're seeing things we've been seeing all along, we just haven't been able to see them with cameras before. We're moving our world of imaging, I believe, ever closer to our human experience of the real world. And therein, I think, lies the greatest potential of where <clears throat> this whole process is going. But we do have to remember we're still very early on in this process. We get amazed and uh, impressed and I think sometimes shocked at how far the technology has come. But we have to keep in mind that we're still so early on in this photoelectric imaging world that I would still say we're in the Stone Age of this era. Now that's not to say that electronic images haven't been around for a long time. They've been around since the 1860s and sketched out as early as the 1840s. But the potential of where this can go in terms of enlarging our ability to hold the human experience, to appreciate in a recorded fashion what we were able to see and experience is still just at the beginning. In fact, I think we're having to rethink what a photograph is. You know, I've heard photographers say that they don't want to photograph at a particular time, the light was bad. You know, as a photographer, as an image maker, as a human on the planet Earth, that's almost an inconceivable term to me. Bad light. What on earth are they thinking? Are they thinking that the light has to be some perpetual golden glow of sunset in order to be a particularly valid time of day to make a photograph? Is there such a thing as bad light? I don't think so. And one of the things this new technology is enabling us to do is photograph in all sorts of light conditions. There is nothing but good light because light is miraculous. Because the fact that we're standing here on this planet being bathed in this glow of this constant thermonuclear stream from this glowing sun nearly 100 million miles away, we ought to be damn grateful we're not burned up every day, which we ought to be by physical constraints, and yet at the same time we get the blessings of it. There's no such thing as bad light. There are bad machines. There are poorly decided design machines. There are also machines designed to record light that are still in their infancy. And frankly, that's where we're at. That's one of the things that makes the future of where photography can go so damn interesting. You know, one of the things that photography has always tried to do, and when you think about it in terms of this, it makes it clear how big the challenge is. Because in a sense, the photograph is trying to take our experience of a place, that concatenated experience where we're gazing around, where the iris and the exposure compensation on the retina and our memory and mind are all interacting to create an image in our mind and a memory of a scene. And in that gazing around the scene, we're creating a mental image that in one way or another our cameras are trying to chase. We expect our photographs to hold that memory of the scene. Those memories are acquired over several moments. We've been trapped in this notion for so long of a photograph as a slice of a second. Now, we've got video, but we've always thought of it as separate. But memory is a different thing. They're acquired over many moments. What we can take in as humans with our brain and our limited optical abilities, when added together over a period of time, amount to far more information than the highest resolution camera we've ever even dreamed of. Not only do we add things like depth perception to the process, but we add all sorts of memory knowledge that connects. We add all sorts of opening up of the iris, closing it down, 
constantly refocusing. The human eye does not know limited depth of field. Because your eye is adjusting so quickly, you never see anything out of focus unless you've got a vision problem. Selective focus, to me, as a photographer, is an inconceivable choice that I would choose to make, which means glass is a problem, which means limited depth of field is a problem. We chase this experience photographically, sometimes in very innovative ways. We uh, take multiple images, like my friend Ted Orland, and put them together. We uh, do video. We uh, do 360-degree immersive imaging to try and imitate our experience of a place. But this concatenated experience has some very high demands. Extraordinary dynamic range, because in a single instant with a camera, we're trying to chase our mind and optical system's adaptability. Accurate color, not funky, processed, high contrast, high saturation, modern kind of junk that you see coming out of all of these ASICs that are programmed for so-called consumer color, but the rich, nuanced, real world that's actually there. That extreme detail that comes from us glancing around the scene and taking all of that detail in. All of these aspirations in a way, create some real challenges that are fundamental problems to where photography has been and in many ways still is. Let's face it, glass is funky. Melted sand as a way of focusing light is primitive. It causes all sorts of problems of focus, different wavelengths trying to be focused at the same place. It doesn't work very well. Where are we going to go with that? And the way we're encoding color, my God, we're using the Bayer pattern on these cameras. This is about as primitive as you can get. The autochrome, in many ways, in 1900, with colored potato starch grains, actually did a better job, in some ways, than a modern Bayer pattern. We've got huge exposure and dynamic range challenges. And then, to adapt to them, we take an old-fashioned photographic adaptation, bracketing exposures and putting them together, which is not a bad way of trying to cope with this issue of the world being a much brighter, contrasty, and potentially more nuanced place than the cameras can easily hold. And then, with this HDR, we make this butt-ugly stuff that doesn't look anything like the scene. <laughs> 